Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadhari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Shishi Radha Govinda Ki Jai Shishi Radha how to put this uh, light on? So today we are studying um, Srimad Bhagavatam from uh, <coughs> Canto 4, Chapter 8, entitled Dhruva Maharaj Leaves Home. And... Um, we have what texts? Can somebody remind me? Um, from forty four. 252 and the focus verse will be text 46. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Who's managing the screen? Okay. Can you go to the verses? Wasn't one of my initiation vows. So these are verses spoken by Narada Muni, a very important acharya in our line, a son and disciple of Lord Brahma, and actually an avatar, bhakti avatar, Narada. One meaning of Narada is one who gives Narayana, Narada. So, text uh, 44. Page not fun. No, this is more than enough. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll see how in these verses 
Narada Muni keeps instructing Dhruva Maharaj on how to practice uh, devotional Ashtanga Yoga. And then uh, he will give a description of the form of the Lord. Okay, so who likes to read the f text 44? Hare Krishna. After sitting on your seat, practice the three kinds of breathing exercises and thus gradually control the life air, the mind, and the senses. Completely free yourself from all material contamination and with great patience begin to meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The form of the Lord is described herein. The Lord's face is perpetually very beautiful and pleasing in attitude. To the devotees who see him, he appears never to be displeased, and he is always prepared to award benedictions to them. His eyes, his nicely decorated eyebrows, his raised nose, and his broad forehead are all very beautiful. He is more beautiful than all the demigods. Narada Muni continued, the Lord's form is always youthful. Every limb and every part of his body is properly formed, free from defect. His eyes and lips are pinkish like the rising sun. He is always prepared to give shelter to the surrendered soul, and anyone so fortunate as to look upon him feels all satisfaction. The Lord is always worthy to be the master of the surrendered soul, for he is the ocean of mercy. No, scroll. Just scroll. To the next one. The Lord is further described as having the mark of Srivatsa, or the sitting place of the goddess of fortune, and his bodily hue is deep bluish. The Lord is a person. He wears a garland of flowers, and he is eternally manifest with four hands, which hold, beginning from lower hand, a conch shell, wheel, club, and a lotus flower. The entire body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, is decorated. He wears a valuable jeweled helmet, necklace, and bracelets. His neck is adorned with a kastuba jewel, and he is dressed in yellow silk garments. The Lord is decorated with small golden bells around his waist and his lotus feet are decorated with golden ankle bells. All his bodily features are very attractive and pleasing to the eyes. He is always peaceful, calm and quiet and very pleasing to the eyes and the mind. A real yogis meditate upon the transcendental form of the Lord as he stands on the whole of the lotus of their hearts, the jewel-like nails of his lotus feet glittering. The Lord is always smiling and the devotee should constantly see the Lord in this form as he looks very mercifully towards the devotee. In this way, the meditator should look toward the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the bestower of all benedictions. Last verse of the series. One who meditates in this way, concentrating his mind upon the always auspicious form of the Lord, is very soon freed from all material contamination, and he does not come down from meditation upon the Lord. Thank you. Thank you all. We go back to text uh, 46. Arunam Ramani Yangam 
ಅರುಣೋಷ್ಠೇಕ್ಷನಾಧರ ಪ್ರಾಣಥಾಶ್ರಾ ನೃನ್ನ ಶರಣ್ಯ ಕರುಣಾರ್ನಭಂ We read together the word by word. Tarunam youthful, Ramaniya attractive, Angam all parts of the body, Aruna Oshta lips pinkish like the rising sun, Ikshana Adharam eyes of the same nature. Pranata, one who is surrendered. Ashrayanam, shelter of the surrendered. Nrimnam, transcendentally pleasing in all respects. Sharanyam, the person unto whom it is just worthy to surrender. Karuna, merciful like, Arnavam, the ocean. Translation, Narada Muni continued, the Lord's form is always youthful. <coughs> every limb and every part of his body is properly formed, free from defect. His eyes and lips are pinkish like the rising sun is always prepared to give shelter to the surrendered soul. And anyone so fortunate as to look upon him feels all satisfaction. The Lord is always worthy to be the master of the surrendered soul, for he is the ocean of mercy. Prepared by Srila Prabhupada. Everyone has to surrender to someone superior. That is always the nature of our living condition. At the present moment, we are trying to surrender to someone, either to society or to our nation, family, state, or government. The surrendering process already exists. But it is never perfect because the person or institution unto whom we surrender is imperfect. And our surrender, having so many ulterior motives, is also imperfect. As such, in the material world, no one is worthy to accept anyone's surrender. Nor does anyone fully surrender to anyone else unless obliged to do so. But here the surrendering process is voluntary and the Lord is worthy to accept the surrender. The surrender by the living entity occurs automatically as soon as he sees the beautiful, youthful nature of the Lord. The description given by Narada Muni is not imaginary. The form of the Lord is understood by the parampara system. 
Mayavadi philosophers say that we have to imagine the form of the Lord, but here Narada Muni does not say that. Rather, he gives the description of the Lord from authoritative sources. He is himself an authority and he is able to go to Vaikuntha Loka and see the Lord personally. Therefore, his description of the bodily features of the Lord is not imagination. Sometimes we give instructions to our students about the bodily features of the Lord and they paint him. Their paintings are not imaginary. The description is given through the Sipi succession, just like that given by Narada Muni, who sees the Lord and describes his bodily features. Therefore, such descriptions should be accepted, and if they are painted, that is not imaginative painting. Om Ajnana Tivirandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chakshuru Militamina, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Mam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastai Bhutale Shimadi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Vanchakalpa Tarubya Scha Kripa Sindhva Eva Cha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Surrender It's a major theme both in the verse and in the purport I have a friend in Italy a devotee who had uh, a lot of experience with um, what we call the bhakta program the, the training for new devotees and in his experience he told me that those people who come to the temple and they say they declare I'm convinced I want to dedicate my life to Krishna. From now onward, I'll be a devotee. Those people, after three, four days, they leave the temple, you don't see them again. But those people who come in a very, we could say, not hesitant, but they say, well, I'm here to check this thing out. I don't know. Um, I just want to understand Krishna consciousness. Those are the people who stay all life in Krishna consciousness. And they take sannyas and everything. Of course, it's not like a rule because there may be some people who are so special, so qualified from previous lives that actually the first day they come, they are already surrendered. They're just completing a process that they started and continue sometimes for lifetimes. But in general, those who believe that surrender, it's a simple act, it's a simple decision, they may not have understood how Krishna consciousness works. They may be very proud, actually because they may feel qualified that simple by my, simply by my decision to surrender today, yes, I like Krishna consciousness, and this will protect me from all the obstacles, temptations, uh, disappointments that I will face. But it doesn't really generally work like that. It's a process. It's a gradual process. Now what gradual means? We have Dhruva Maharaj. His process is also gradual. But because of his determination, because the energy is investing, in six months he sees the Lord face to face. But even at that level of determination, and in those circumstances, he was in Madhuvan, perfect place in Vrindavan. He had the greatest spiritual master, Narada Muni, who personally instructed him. 
shaping the instructions to his nature. And then he had this extraordinary superhuman drive to get to his objective. But even for him, it took six months. So when we say that it's a gradual process, that should not be an excuse to be lazy, to be laissez-faire. Say, well, it's a gradual process, you know. That's not the spirit. But the idea is to understand the process. So I'm going to read uh, a few descriptions that of Srila Prabhupada describing the process of surrender, the six steps. He calls them sometimes the phases of surrender. So phases is something that means there are stages. And this is a famous, famous verse. You will find it in the Hari Bhakti Vilas by Srila Sanatana Goswami. Uh, we find it uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Srila Prabhupada keeps quoting it in full or in part, uh, starting in the Bhagavad Gita and again in many other books. Here I'm reading from the uh, Narada Bhakti Sutra, which is uh, a book Srila uh, Prabhupada only, uh, there are 48 verses, Srila Prabhupada only translated and commented on the first 15. Then His Holiness Satsuru Maharaj completed the rest. Mm. This is Srila Prabhupada. There are six symptoms of surrender. Number one, one should perform only those actions favorable for devotional service to Krishna. I'm I'm writing I'm I'm reading from the Narada Bhakti Sutra text twelve. The Sanskrit is Anukulyasya Sankalpaha. In other words, to decide to do only the favorable anukula, something that helps in developing Krishna consciousness. So that comes first, the decision to perform only those actions favorable for devotional service to Krishna. It's already a major step because there are so many activities in our life, daily life, uh, our private life, uh, and in our just psychological dynamics that are not necessarily favorable. Maybe attached, maybe find some entertainment, but um, they're not favorable to develop our love for, for the Lord. Mm. And, of course, we know, you all know, wh what are these favorable, um, the chanting the holy name, and increasing the quality of our chanting, Concentration, intensity. Then um, reading the Shastra, listening, no, Shravanam, Kirtanam, listening to the teachings of the Acharyas, teachings of Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hmm? And then so many other processes like serving the devotees, taking only food offered to Krishna, and so on. So that's the first symptom of the first stage. One makes that decision. That's the nature of yoga, that you decide, okay, I'll do things that will improve my yogic situation, that will protect and develop my capacity of being in yoga and being in union. As usual, when there is a positive injunction, there is also a negative injunction. So the negative injunction is number two, one should give up everything unfavorable 
for discharging devotional service, which translates as pratikulyasya bharjanam. Bharjana means abandoning, rejecting. Hmm? Pratikulyasya, anukulyasya. Anu means following, is favorable. Prati means it's, uh, it's against. Hmm? Same word, anukulya, pratikulya. What's something which is against? So, pratikulyasya varjanam. Rejecting what's not good. And I surmise that you all know what's not good for devotional service. Just like at the time of initiation, we promise to chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Mantra, but we also promise to abandon for pillars of a religious life to eat violent food and eat only to not to eat I mean we, uh, we, we promise not to eat meat, fish, eggs even onion and garlic to avoid illicit sex to avoid all forms of intoxications and stimulants and to avoid gambling. So those are the, we could say, gross physical activities, but there are so many other activities that are actually uh, praticulia. There are, there are obstacles. One, uh, I heard a story, Srila Prabhupada once uh, was uh, seeing a devotee uh, reading uh, Newsweek, Newsweek magazine. And he said, Something like, uh, look, just by looking at the faces of those sinful people, because Newsweek is a political magazine, just uh, looking at the place of those sinful people, you lose all your pious activities. <laughs> now, of course, Srila Prabhupada was informed about what was going on in the world um, when he spoke with Professor Kotowski in, in Moscow, one of the first things he said is that I was reading yesterday in the newspaper, Russia Today, so and so, that Russia is very interested in you know, ideas that can improve uh, their idea of communism and so on. So I'm not saying we should not be informed um, because sometimes the devotees are innocently but embarrassingly, embarrassingly uninformed of what's going on in the world. And of course, I mean, each one has got the service. Some devotees don't need to know anything that is going on in the world. But if you interact with the public who live in the world, maybe it's good to know who is the present uh, president of the country, who is the present vice president of the country, things like that. Things like that. Mm. I remember in Italy, at one point, we had a radio station, Radio Krishna Centrale, and um, there was a lot of interaction with the public. And uh, one day there was, uh, some, some of you, I mean, most of you may not remember, well, there was a final of the uh, soccer championship, the Champions League, and somehow uh, the supporters of one of the team attacked the supporters of the other team within the stadium, and some uh, 40 people died. And so somebody uh, next day was uh, asking the devotees who was online, said, what do you think of what happened yesterday? Hmm? And there was another devotee listening to the radio, and it was obvious that the devotee didn't know what happened <laughs> the day before. So he started just, uh, uh, well, you know, we need to understand that, <clears throat> that uh, yeah, without Krishna consciousness. Uh <laughs> and then this devotee rushed up to the radio, with the newspaper. <laughs> said, this is what happened yesterday. 40 people die, 80 people wounded in a, in a, in a football, in a, in a soccer match like that. 
So anyway, especially if you are <laughs> in a radio station, you may want to know what's going on in the world. That is the highlights. Hmm. So I'm not encouraging you to read all the newspaper, all the news feed, the CNN, 24 hours a day, uh, or things like that. But if you interact with the public, it's good to have some idea of what's going on in the world. But if you don't need, you don't need. Because anyway, whatever it's a news today, in two days, or five days, seven days, ten days, is old news. And nobody cares. Radhanath Maharaj, in his humility, tells a story. Some of you might have heard it. That um, he was in New Vrindavan. And he was living, truly, as a, as a yogi, completely absorbed in the service of the deities, Shirada Vrindavan Chandra, and he was d disconnected from the world. I mean, in a, I'm saying in a positive sense. So then, after years that he was just in New Vrindavan, he went for a school program, an outreach event. So he went to a school, I think it's a high school in a nearby town, and he started talking with the students. You know, we need to be serious in spiritual life. We need to have an interest in this, uh, in, in, in self-realization, because you need to understand if you're not a devotee, you may be sent to Vietnam. And then everybody looked at each other, kind of confused, you know. And then the, the teacher told him, but uh, uh, actually, the Vietnam War ended five years ago. And he didn't even know that the Vietnam War ended five years before. So, but no, he, he told the story so I can retell it. So. Okay. Um, anyway, I only have two minutes for the next four. <laughs> so let's see. Rakshi Shatiti Vishwasu. Now, the next, see, the first two are observable, uh, measurable. You can see if somebody is chanting, you can see somebody, at least the person can see. Am I eating meat or not? Am I chanting or not? Am I reading or not? The other four are more subtle, are more internal. It's more a question of mentality, a question of a, a deep sense of identity that cannot be readily observed or measured. One has to feel those. So I'll read them. First one is, number three, one should firmly believe that Krishna will protect one in all circumstances and that no one is a better protector than Krishna. So here today, can you go to the Sanskrit? Today's verse, today focus verse, we see this, this word, sharanyam, uh, the person worthy of surrender. And uh, ashrayanam is the shelter. So developing that sense that Krishna is my shelter and no one else is my shelter and having that faith that Krishna will protect me. Rakshisha titi. Hmm. That's a third step of surrender. It's an internal, it's an internal thing. We, we don't really know who has it, who doesn't have it, or to what extent people have it. Because we see, oh, this devotee is going to office uh, 9 to 5. But doesn't mean he may have may, may be much more dependent on Krishna internally than maybe a sannyasi, who may be worried about so many other things. Okay, I'll, I'll go quick so that we have a few moments for questions or comments. Number four, Goptritve Varanam Tata. Shira Prabhupada puts, one should have the conviction that Krishna is one's maintainer and one should not take shelter of any demigod for maintenance. Hmm. So that's a real uh, Brahminical, Brahminical and devotional platform in which we know Okay, I was born in this world. It is said in India, even in, uh, in uh, popular wisdom, when you're born, 
your food is born with you. You heard this? It's very popular in India, right? Was that the Hindi saying, or maybe in every language? Huh? Or how do you say? What's your language? How do you say in Telugu? Acha. So basically, when you're born, your food is born with you. I mean, not simultaneously the same moment, because <laughs> the ways will go bad, you know. <laughs> so, but if you're born in this world, there is enough food for you. In fact, there is no record of any Vaishnava ever dying of starvation. Shri Prabhupada explained that there was a big famine in Bengal, millions of people, literally millions of people. It was an artificial famine created by the British because they wanted to enroll people in the army, so they starved the people, so they had to join the army if they want to survive. But Sri Prabhupada explains that no, no Vaishnava ever died of, of famine. Mm. So that, that's just one element of, of uh, maintenance. There are other aspects, of course, but food is the primary, Anamaya. So one should be peaceful, knowing that I'm at the lotus feet of the Lord, Krishna will uh, take care of me. And, and, in the unlikely event that I die of starvation, that's also, you know, a plan of Krishna. Hmm. And it's good for me. You have to die of something. Number five, one should always remember that one's activities and desires are not independent. In other words, the devotee should feel completely dependent on Krishna and thus he should act and think as Krishna desires. So think as Krishna desires. Not only the action of the body, but the actions of the mind. So here we are moving to a very advanced level. Hmm? And the, the Sanskrit of this is Atma Nikshepa. Atma Nikshepa. Nikshepa is a word that means many things. Nikshepa means, uh, sometimes means throwing oneself. Or Nikshepa, technically, also when you make a, a bank deposit, that deposit is called Nikshepa. So you deposit your at yourself to Krishna's lotus feet. It's like, I'm yours. Like you transfer money. You transfer money, okay, now this money is not in my bank account anymore. It's in your bank account or in uh, Amazon's bank account. So, Atmanik Shepa, you are depositing yourself at the lotus feet of Krishna. And of course, uh, you can see how Srila Prabhupada elaborates just on these two words, Atmanik Shepa. So, surrender the body, surrender the mind, surrender the words, surrender the desires, surrender everything. And then that last one is karpanye. Uh, which one may take as a negative word because karpanye means basically feeling uh, one should always think himself the poorest of the poor and feel totally dependent on the mercy of Krishna. Karpanye means basically feeling uh, miserable. Miserable meaning feeling completely insignificant. Because one realizes, I don't even control my body, I don't even control my, my digestive system, and this body is so frail, and uh, even uh, socially, my reputation is so frail, can be destroyed in one moment. Um, so one really feels insignificant. And uh, again, it's a feeling of peace, because it's not... One is not wor working anymore on self-aggrandizement, on reputation. Is not anymore being the uh, advertiser of oneself. He may take positions. He may he may accept uh, uh, garlands or he may accept uh, honor sometime. But inside is uh, he feels insignificant. So these are the six. Uh, uh, phases of surrender 
And uh, we do have some nine minutes for questions or comments. Maybe not all at once, but um, no. Oh, sure. <laughs> Uh, we have a we have a mic for you. We all want to hear. So when we were living in San Diego, um, uh, classes were given uh, about the uh, current events. Okay. And all the current events were spoken, and then a beautiful Bhagavatam class was given by those current events. So it was really. Every, every day or. When uh, who was the temple president there in those days was, um, was he's a GBC now in in uh, Madre Narayan Maharaj. Yes, so he would always give these amazing classes on current events and you know comment on them in the Bhagavatam class. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was in a in a book distribution group, was it called Sankirtan Party? Somehow the the leaders, uh, the leaders uh, of the Yatra felt that uh, we were so unbelievably ignorant of what was going on that once a week before the Bhagavatam we would read the newspaper because the devotees were like unbelievable, unbelievably unaware. unaware <laughs> and. Uh, I remember once I, I, uh, we asked uh, to a devotee, who is the president of the country, this country, not some Uzbekistan or Turkmenics, what is, who is the president? And he very confidently said a name, but that was the previous president. <laughs> anyway, so like that. Again, it's a question of balance. Uh, maybe you don't need to know so much. I mean, uh, like uh, this is uh, election here in this country. You don't need to know every single political commentary, every single poll result. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, on 6th or 7th November, you need to know who, who won the race. <laughs> I mean, just at least as a trivia point. Okay, there's a president of the country. Okay, yes. Usually every event is having to do with birth, death, disease, and old age, and all they do is change the names. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, all, it's just all based around those things. Every current event. Eating, mating, sleeping, defending, birth, death, disease, and old age, and all they do is change the names. So if we know the names, yeah, okay. Who did what, or when, or why? Mm. That's that's true. You don't want to seem like you're absent. <laughs> yeah, if you interact with the public, especially if you go outside and um, some some idea, you know. But certain things are just not important. Like, say, for instance, uh, you may not have any idea, and it's okay about the. Uh, sports sportsmen, sports women and sports women, because those are really like Prabhuji was saying that just today somebody, next day somebody else. Um, anybody else wants to say anything? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much for your class. I have a question. Nowadays I see some like only sometimes people take Krishna and turn into Maya. Let's suppose there's a prasadam out there and sometimes like okay, sometimes I eat too much, then I regret why I eat too much, then I'm in Maya, then I feel sleepy and sleep. Not only for prasadam, but for there's so many things. We say it, it is offered to Krishna, now it is prasadam. We say, I'm, I, I surrender to Krishna, I offer it to Krishna, now I'm using, it's a prasadam. But when we using it as a prasadam, 
Sometimes I feel like it is not Prasadam anymore. You turn into <laughs> Maya. <laughs> it turns back into Boga. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the difference between Anukulyasya and Pratikulyasya. And everybody should uh, have uh, the intelligence, the honesty, the transparency, and the sincerity to decide when it's Anukulya, when it's uh, favorable, and when it's unfavorable. So you are an adult uh, man, intelligent man. You're also a slim man, by the way. Uh, you say that you eat a lot, but uh, you're pretty slim. So... Um, yeah, we are in front of prashadam. We need to know when that prashadam remains anukulya and when that same prashadam becomes pratikulya. That everybody should know according to their nature, to their capacity of digestion. Ah? Pardon? Anukulyasya means favorable, something that helps. Pratikulyasa is something that actually it's an obstacle. It goes against. Prati means going against. So that uh, it's also personal. Some people have very, very uh, extraordinary digestive powers. They can eat much more. Then there is a social aspect. Like there is the Maprashada comes out. I'm talking about a hypothetical temple, not about Iskandalas. But say the <laughs> the prashada, Amma prashada comes, comes out and there are 10 pieces of cake and you take all 10. Like I've seen also in this temple somebody doing. <laughs> and that's also, I mean, it's, it's very favorable for your, for your eating. <laughs> but may not be so favorable for the rest of the community that there are 10 pieces of cake and you take all of them just because you are the first to come on the on the scene and then it becomes a, a crime scene <laughs> 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 because you stole you know i mean unless you unless your doctor really told you you had to eat 10 pieces of cake it's essential for you and then of course there are health uh, health considerations like there was a devotee if african american devotee he was uh, uh, seriously sick with diabetes. And uh, some devotee preached to him, no, no, but this is Maha Prashad. This is Maha Prashad. So he forced him to eat uh, uh, sweets, and he died. He just died. Sometimes we project strange ideas on how, uh, the, how the laws of nature work. Yes. I just wanted to make a small point on the, um, like the example of the cake. Like for example, with things like this, we should always judge ourselves internally and, and assess our own intentions. But if I were to see someone else taking 10 pieces of cake and then judge them, that becomes my own criticism and my own anartha because they may be taking 10 pieces of cake to distribute to uh, people in need or to family and things. So I just wanted to, not that you were saying we should judge, you weren't saying that. I just wanted to throw that in there just in case um, the idea may come, oh, if I see someone else doing this, then that's bad there in Maya. But it might not be that way. So we should judge ourselves very harshly, but not uh, make any assumptions about anyone else's intentions. Yes, that's called giving the benefit of the doubt. This devotee is walking with 10 pieces of cake, but he might have a complete legitimate reason. We don't know. Or he may be a glutton, an insensitive hoarder. We don't know. So give the benefit of the doubt. And now we will practice this lesson. We'll move to the Prashadam Hall and we'll see who picks up, how much you pick up. There are uh, CCV cameras. <laughs> so our time is up, right? Should we stop here? Well, we have two, you wanted to say something? I don't know, you tell me, should I should stop or stop? Huh? Okay, so you also had something, you wanted to say something? He was for the first, actually. It's uh, 
thank you for the wonderful uh, class. Actually, I have some. Speak in the mic uh, directly in the mic. But it died out. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Um, my question is a little different, uh, slightly connected to this. <laughs> okay, tell yeah. us what this. Narada Muni, as a perfect spiritual master, instructs uh, uh, Dhruva Maharaj, like uh, where you have to go and uh, how comfortable place you have to go and do, I mean, do your sadhana and everything, he instructs, right? Uh -huh. In current world, every day, we are seeing lots of killings in the name of God or something. Uh, even today also, uh, so much, I mean, I read so much very bad news, like uh, hundreds of people uh, got killed by mass shooting in Russia. Under 10, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Who's count? Yeah, why yes. I'm saying is, I mean, uh, in today's world, uh, people in the name of God actually uh, trapping kids or women or uh, killing so what's kids. what's your question? Yeah, I mean, uh, question is like, uh, are we prepared for the actual reality or, I mean, do we have Kshatriya Dharma in our Dharma? I mean, uh, are we actually teaching that aspect also in our uh, spirituality or uh, we are just ignoring the reality and, uh, I mean, making all ours like, I mean, even uh, temples are getting attacked. So many uh, things are happening. Uh, See, this is a, a very, what do you call, composite question because there are so many elements you're bringing okay some religious fanatic in 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 moscow they go inside the theater they they shoot everybody even in india uh, yeah. every day so much yeah i was already happening. answering your question by the way i got i got it i got it there are different people who use religion for violent purposes and they justify their uh, killing with their religious beliefs i understand now your question is very complex because say, what do you mean uh, by Kshatriya Dharma? I mean, Kshatriya Dharma is for Kshatriyas, right? Kshatriya Dharma is for Kshatriya. That's our philosophy. According to your nature, you'll have a certain Dharma. So, yes, if you are a Kshatriya potential, we could say, she has a Kshatriya potential, apparently. So, <laughs> so if you have a kshatriya potential, yes, you could develop some form of kshatriya dharma. Now, what does it mean, kshatriya dharma? So I'm not going to go, because of the lack of time, I'm not going to go into details what the kshatriya dharma would mean. Simply collecting guns and bombs and explosives or, or uh, retaliation or things. Kshatriya, Kshatriya are also diplomats. Kshatriya means also you're dealing with the powers in a way that is favorable. So Kshatriya Dharma means many things. And uh, if you feel uh, we should have a, a better security in the temple, that, that's a more a managerial issue we can discuss with the temple president. If you want to donate for uh, CCV cameras and things like that, why not? So we take the last comment or question. But it's a very subtle thing. What's a Kshatriya Dharma? Who is for? What does it mean? Hmm? Yes. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Prabhu. I wish to kind of connect all the themes that have been introduced um, pertaining to Prasad as well as current events. Acha. Uh -huh. So current and what Narada says in text 44, as his instruction to Dhruva to um, engage in devotional service by the means of meditation. So the meditation is being described in these texts, like what to focus on, the different forms of Krishna. Um, and why does he need to engage in devotional service? And I believe it's because he's getting distracted. So my question is, can we also bring this meditation that Narada describes to our everyday life where these current events are being, um, they're kind of distracting us from the form of the Lord? I know we've only been prescribed by Chaitanya to chant Hare Krishna, 
That's one method, but I'm asking specifically about this meditation. Can we bring this into our everyday life? For example, I'm sitting here talking, but I could also have in my imagination the form of the Lord that's being described here. So that's my question. How practical is that? The, the easy and short answer is uh, uh, yes and no. Meaning, yes, the same principles of meditation are universal and permanent, but we have many more facilities in the sense that for us to meditate in the, on the form of the Lord, our two major aspects of that is chanting the name that is not different from the form of the Lord, and then coming in front of the deities or serving the deities directly in different ways by coming to the programs and contemplating the form of the Lord. So the principles we can extract, but the things like um, the, the exact method or procedures, they are not really for us. Probably if we even try, we'll probably just go to a forest and try to uh, minimize eating like Dhruva uh, did, uh, then eating only uh, berries and then eating only dry leaves and then eat, drinking only water and then stopping, we we'll probably get very soon sick and will be completely incapacitated of doing any spiritual life. So. We can take the principles and see how the Acharyas following Narada Muni, following the Bhagavatam, gave us. Uh, and the main thing is chanting and keeping a healthy life, uh, coming in front of the deities as much as possible, meditate through the singing, meditate through the Bhagavatam, which is another form of the Lord. Okay? Thank you so much uh, for, this, uh, for your attention and patience. Have a great day. Today it's uh, Gorpurnim's Eve, it's a great time to meditate. Tomorrow we celebrate the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya. So it's a great uh, uh, day for uh, preparing ourselves. Jai Granta Rashi Mabadam Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanan